HMRC funding. Um, really keen to just run through the different options that we can support with here at Swoop um, and the different, firstly, some different products within within HMRC funding. Um, also within uh, look, looking at a couple of case studies um, and we've also got a, a few questions that have come in prior to the call uh, that we'll run through. So firstly, HMRC funding, what what is it? Um, and by definition, what we're what we're really looking at here is funding options and, and different uh, different possibilities against HMRC um, liabilities um, and and being able to support with um, the different products around that. So, like I say, we'll we'll go into detail with each one um, in a little bit. Okay, so firstly, just really keen to give a little update in terms of where the current market is. Um, I suppose overall um, within within commercial lending and, and and maybe some of the things that we are seeing. So obviously it's it's not hard to uh, kind of well I'm sure everybody's aware of of the the kind of pretty significant change in in, in lending environment over the last twelve to eighteen months. Obviously base rate with, with um, the rise of inflation, cost of living crisis, etc. Base rate has gone up pretty considerably um, over that time period. And what the knock-on effect of that is, is that the cost of commercial borrowing has has increased. Um, and, and that is something that we will always um, always kind of broach when we speak to our advisors, um, to our businesses, um, in, in, in terms of the different options that are that are available. So I suppose the key the key there is really just around um, yeah, understanding what the current market um, is and, and and what options are available. So when we when we speak to a business, we're always holistic with the different options that, that are available. And I suppose the first the first thing that we that we need to do is is really understand what the requirements are going to be. Um, it may be that a business is struggling with their working capital position. It may be that they've won some new contracts and need to invest back in into growth. It may be that they've had some really strong recruitment opportunities um come up and um and, and kind of see what it is that we um can support on that side and once we've had that conversation whether that's with the advisor or with the director of the business what we are then able to do is is really start to think about the potential solutions that we can put in place um and i think what's what's really key there is is yeah understanding what is going to be most suitable um and then being able to to start to gather the information um and so on so I suppose the knock-on effect of 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 the current market and and where where things are currently in terms of different options is that through COVID we saw uh, obviously a high amount of lending go into businesses through uh, the bounce back loan scheme through Sybils um, and there was lots of lots of funds put out the door by your high street banks um, and, and and different lending entities through that period. Obviously, with where things are now, things have moved on quite considerably, and we are back to a much more traditional market. And what I would say is that a lot of lenders are being a little bit, not necessarily risk averse, um, but are being a little bit more careful with those increased interest rates um, in terms of where uh, where they're looking to lend and kind of which businesses that they're looking to looking to support with. And what that has led to is that a bit more of a focus on maybe some other working capital tools and different growth opportunities that business businesses can access um, to ensure that they can they can reach their goals um, in terms of going on to the next stage and in terms of the different and um, funding options that that are available, and one that we are seeing a lot at the moment is discussions around HMRC funding. What this is, how we can support, and um, what are the options? What's the price? Um, and I think really important for us to to, to run through those um, options with clients because it is a really accessible product in the market at the moment, and and, and one that we have seen uh, quite a lot of volume with. So, just to um, go into the first product that we're seeing and probably the one that we see the most amount of inquiries for and, and probably the most amount of, of of essentially facilities that we put in place. And this is funding for a business's VAT liability. So what this is, is a three-month uh, loan term facility um, that is essentially moves that quarterly VAT liability of the business and puts it into three fixed monthly repayments. Um, you're generally looking at a flat rate around 5.5 to 9%, um, dependent on the lender of which we are able to secure the terms from, um, the business, and I suppose that fluctuation there is dependent on generally the risk appetite for the lender 
and the risk profile of the client. And that's going to, going to determine where, where it sits upon that scale. So the way, the way it operates. So let's say if we have a, um, the 7th of February coming up at the start of next month, let's say the, the business is back return is due for payments HMRC then. What we can look to do rather than spread, rather than uh, the business have to service that liability in one go, we're essentially splitting that into three fixed monthly repayments. There's a whole host of uses for that in terms of businesses having access to that cash for longer. And one of the main ones is using that additional capital for growth. When a business is able to, so using a maybe working example, if they've got a £30,000 um, VAT liability and spreading that over three fixed monthly repayments of just over 10,000, including interest costs, you are holding on to that cash for a much longer amount of time. And having access to that cash means that you can reinvest back into the business. Potentially you can go and you can go and uh, hire that next member of staff. You can invest back into marketing. You can take on that new contract because your working capital position has been smoothed out. You are in a position where you can maybe look to reinvest back into the business and and and, and ultimately grow. So I think one of the, the 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 common misconceptions around HMRC funding is that it's maybe a, a kind of last chance saloon um, where the if the business is unable to 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 to, to meet the liability, uh, if they're unable to, pardon me, sorry, um, if if maybe HMRC aren't being accommodating with the time to pay, that it's this is a last chance bit um, that we can support with. But in in reality, there are lots and lots of uses for for this this HMRC funding rather than um, it just be like I say that that last chance. And again, we'll we'll go on to a few case studies um, in terms of later or later through the webinar. Um, so again, VAT funding probably the the most common one that we see. The next one is corporation tax funding. So this is a uh, obviously probably due to, to, to the nature of the tax where we, we see it less frequently, obviously once a year rather than four times a year that it's due. Um, and it is it is exactly what it says on the tin. It's essentially a, a funding facility um, to spread the cost of uh, a business's corp tax return. Um, the liability can be spread over six, 10 or 12 months. So it's not a case of that it has to be that 12 months. If maybe the business was looking to reduce the amount of interest cost um, by spreading it um, and they're happy to, to maybe service the higher repayments. We can we can put it over six or 10 months. Um, and then your flat rate's probably sitting around 10 to 16%, which in comparison to other unsecured facilities, maybe not related directly to corporation tax funding itself, uh, is 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 competitive and, and kind of in line of, of kind of what we're seeing. Um, as I mentioned there before, uh, obviously corp tax in in an ideal world, a business itself will will potentially kind of hold back the funds due for corp tax throughout the year. But what we see a lot, and it's completely understandable, where that the, there may be unexpected costs that may encounter uh, the businesses may encounter through the year, and it may be they had great growth growth opportunities um, prior to the return being due, but they needed to invest that money back into uh, to see the continued growth of the business, um, and I think. Within that, it's 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 obviously to a point of where we need to see what options there are um, to be able to, to to potentially meet that liability. And and one thing that we are potentially seeing recently is that that HMRC are being a little best a little bit less lenient with the time to pay arrangements. Um, obviously through COVID, I mentioned there was a lot of arrears uh, associated with, with with some businesses and um as maybe as a whole uh, and hmrc we found uh, all the feedback we're getting from businesses is that maybe they're being a little bit less um kind of kind of tight with their uh, with their time to pay arrangements what this facility does is allow you to meet, meet your obligations on time um so it's not relying on hmrc uh, providing that time to pay you are paying them on time you're meeting your obligations and then you're spreading the cost of that facility back to the lender over the agreed time with obviously the agreed interest um, so in terms of, a, again, similarly to the VAT, where the utilization, you can use it for growth, invest back into the business, but also from working capital tool as well and being able to spread spread the cost of that. Obviously, having access to that cash for longer, I, it also gives the opportunity for you to offset against future tax liabilities. And we'll go into a little bit more detail on a case study uh, shortly. Um, 
but you you being able to you essentially being having to access to that cash for longer you're putting more money back into the business and the next time your tax bill rolls around you can offset some of those uh, liabilities against the against the cash that you've invested um so again another another one that we see that we see quite regularly um in terms of businesses coming to us looking to to spread the cost of that liability um again any questions guys please feel free to to drop anything in the chat great so the next one we can look at and one that maybe we see probably the least of maybe because of um i i think maybe because a number of businesses and directors maybe aren't aware of it i think quite a, a prominent conversation for at the moment, January tax season, a very, very busy time for accountants, um, is that we can or we do have lenders on our panel that support with products to spread the cost of a director's self-assessment tax bill. Um, it brings the, the bill in-house to the business where obviously that's where all the income is, is obviously derived for, for, for the director. Um, rates can fluctuate, again, sim very similarly to the corp tax around that 10 to 16, uh, 10 to 16%. Um, and again, the utilisation of it uh, must improve uh, or can improve the working capital position for, for the director in the business, being able to spread that um, over a period of time. Um, and if the business, if the director is unable to, to pay that, again, it is another option for them to continue to meet those HMRC liabilities on time um, and essentially not incur any penalties for, for, for any late filing or, or sorry, any, any late meeting of that liability. So again, another really strong option and and one that we're that, that we are starting to see slight increases in, but um always good to spread information around around this this option because it isn't one that is is I suppose too well known in the market. Great. And then on the maybe the opposite side to to funding um for liabilities themselves, what happens if HMRC owes the business money? Um we have lenders on our panel that can support with advancing against funds that are owed to businesses um we are seeing slight delays with hmrc coming back on on maybe r and d um r and d side um in terms of yeah a little bit more scrutiny around the claims etc um but we still have lenders that are really really experienced in the um in in that side and could be able to yeah really dial into the business and yeah, I suppose you see the success of it and then be able to advance up to around 85% um, of that R&D claim. Similarly for VAT, we've got uh, work with some businesses that are in a, in a VAT positive position every quarter um, and they're owed, uh, they're owed funds from HMRC on a consistent basis. We have funders that can look at a really, really sleek process in terms of getting access to that cash very quickly. We've got a lender that can actually... Um, if your return is under 100k, uh, they can they can fund within 60 minutes if all the information is is, is there and ready to go. Um, a lot of funders will want to see a previously successful claim on this, um, just to ensure that yeah that 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 it's it's um, going to be relevant and obviously those funds will will be received. Um, Charlotte, I've just seen a a, a quick email. Uh, sorry, a quick question there. Just to um, the question is if, if everyone can't see it, is there a minimum loan amount? Um, so for R and D advances, generally you're looking at um around a minimum of a hundred k as a as an R and D advance. Um, the reason as to why funders structure uh structure it as that is because they're essentially the the minimum of, of well, I, I suppose the fees in which are incurred by uh, advancing against that claim makes that the makes that the minimum that you're uh, able to look at. And um, if it goes below that, again, the fees that, that obviously they make um, won't, won't won't essentially be be, be worth it per se uh, for, for for the lender to be uh, advancing against that uh, liability. Um, on the VAT advance side, um, I believe the minimum is 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 ten k. So you're able to 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 look above that amount. Uh, and again, there generally isn't really a top limit because we have funders that um, can 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 look all above that, um, or or well, up to kind of the top level of those uh, top level of those uh, top level of those returns. Sorry. Um, I hope that answered the question, Charlotte. If if there's anything else, just just let me know. Great. So. Moving on from, from the products um, and the different things that we can look at around HMRC funding, I really just want to go into a few different case studies um, before we then obviously open to any further questions. 
Um, I always find working through case studies is the best way to learn about products. So um, on this on this occasion, this was a, a, a business that came through one of our advisor partners um, who uh, essentially was looking for initially a VAT return in a manufacturing business. Um, they they needed to um, well purchase some new assets was 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 one of the main reasons as to why they they wanted to uh, well one of the first reasons they came to us but also that they were struggling with their working capital um, because they'd taken on a few new contracts and they wanted to um, yeah I suppose spread out the cost of that liability so really re really strong trading business and um, we managed to secure a fat loan um, for them on me. Over a over a three month term, uh, the flat rate that we achieved was seven point two five percent, and and what the business was then able to do was obviously in, keep access to that cash and um, for that return for longer, and what they were then able to do was to purchase another couple of assets um, to assist in their manufacturing process, um, which allowed them to then service those further contracts, increase their increase their revenue, uh, and grow as a business, which which is one of the key things that we we really want to to kind of highlight with these products is that it isn't just for just pure working capital it can be utilized for growth a key thing i wanted to mention around this client was that what they were able to do by having access to that additional capital again was to purchase th those new assets within that they obviously paid back on, on on that purchase and what they then saw was they were able to reclaim that back in their next fat return so essentially they reduced the cost of their next fat bill because they were able to purchase those new assets and because they had access to that capital for longer. So I think a great case study of how we can support, I suppose, as a wider sweep offering, not just through HMRC funding, but also the asset side um, and be able to think of different ways in where we can support businesses to achieve their overall, overall goals, which at the end of the day is to grow, continue trading, service more customers and so on and so forth. So um, like I said, I think a really really good case study to to talk about um and i think um yeah one of our one of our good successes through through hmrc funding great the next one i just wanted to touch on was another vat funding um case study and i think again just shows how this business i suppose really kind of well firstly came to us because they were in a bit of a position where they we're struggling a little bit with their debt to days as, 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 as a recruitment business and um, they were struggling to get cash in the door and what that meant was they had an upcoming back bill that they weren't necessarily struggling to reach they could have paid it but they said we we want to have access to that cash for longer because we're waiting for this to come in but we've also got a great opportunity here to take on another member of staff um who was high performer in the market and then to really go and further further their business um, so we managed to again secure a facility um, just over thirty five thousand uh, three month facility over um, and the rate was six point five percent. So this one was actually one I think we completed maybe maybe around twelve months ago. Um, and I think a key thing for this uh, that product is that actually this business has rolled on that facility for the next three or four quarters. Um, so what we do see is when a business has utilised a facility, um, we can see that they they potentially see see, see the benefit from it. And the knock-on effect of that is, is that they essentially look to roll that on and, and, and utilize it again. So as, as we say, utilizing that over a three, three or four quarter period and, and maybe beyond, what essentially this business has done is move that quarterly VAT liability into three fixed monthly repayments. Uh, sorry, into, into four, yeah, sorry, each quarter, three fixed monthly repayments. So in terms of the business's cash flow cycle, instead of having that big chunky hit to cash flow every quarter, the not the what they've essentially done is spread that payment over those fixed fixed three months. That's allowed them extra cash in the month to then go and um, invest back into the business. In this case, uh, they, they they took on some some additional staff to further the contracts they were working on, and and so on and so forth. Um, and then also in regards to um, yeah, being able to this business itself has actually grown um two two or three fold in terms of their top line revenue since we started working with them um 12 around 12 to 12 to 15 months ago I'm not saying all all down to the hmrc funding product but um we like to think that there's that having access to um this product to improve our working capital uh, and also to be able to invest back into the business was was really beneficial to them. um great 
and then the last one I just wanted to mention was corporation tax. Uh, again, just always great to show uh, a, a kind of facility here that, that, that we supported with. Um, it was a 110k tax bill that had a fantastic year the year before uh, for, lo for a logistics business um, coming off the back of COVID um, and, and really kind of winning some, some key contracts that, that, that they were able to service really well and, and becoming a, 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 a big name in, in the market, which is great. And um, they, they had further contracts upcoming. Um, they wanted to spread the cost of that liability. They, they decided to go for a 10 month term and there was a flat rate of 12.5%. Um, and what that what they were able to then do was just massively improve their working capital position um, and utilize, I suppose, that the money that was going to be spent on that return, invest it back into the business um, and then be able to um, be able to, 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 to take a look at that. They did look to, potentially put a time to pay in place and uh, not so because they couldn't afford it, but because they, they, they wanted to utilize a product uh, But HMRC were unaccommodating in that situation. Um, so again, shows another way in which we can, which we can assist um, in, in, I suppose the different products within, within this, uh, within, within HMRC funding. Great. So that was the presentation, which we want to run through again, an overview of the products uh, and a few case studies. Um, I forgot to introduce myself, I suppose, at the start. I, I'm uh, Thomas, the uh, head, of, head of advisor lending here at Swoop. Uh, I work um, predominantly with uh, our advisor partners and their businesses um, and clients to actually go and secure funding. Um, so um, got experience in the market, predominantly around unsecured facilities. And HMRC funding, like I say, is, is, is a big thing that we are seeing um, a lot of inquiries coming about. Um, my details there, obviously, we will share this presentation with everybody after this call. So if there are any cases in which you guys think, OK, maybe I've got a client here um, that, that that potentially we can have a look at for um, potential HMRC funding and, and, and different things, then always always feel free to drop a drop a message. And we're happy to look at inquiries of any size, whether it is one for, for HMRC funding products or whether it's one of the multitude of different things that we can look at at Swoop, we'll, we'll, we'll always take a review on everything um, and, and see where we can best support. So my details will be there um, and yeah, we'll see what we can support. So yeah, just onto the Q&A. Um, I think Laura mentioned she was going to open a poll of, of some description, but again, I can see, see, see another one uh, that's popped up here. Um, so is there a minimum amount of loan for the VAT funding? So because we've got a few different uh, lenders in the market, um, we've got around three or four that will look at predominantly specific VAT funding products. We have the majority of funders will start at 10K as a minimum loan amount. And that's just due to the credit policy, um, credit policy that 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 that, that they've obviously obviously got there. Sorry. Um so if let's say a VAT funding facility does fall below 10K. There are other lenders in the market that, that we can look at that maybe we can put it onto something that isn't a specific HMRC funding product. So we have lenders that can go as low as £1,000 in terms of a minimum amount from, from, a, from a specific facility. So although we may not be able to support with a with a VAT loan itself over three months, we, we for example, have another lender who can put it over a 12-month term but offer, um, offer flexible repayment. So they, can, so they can keep the facility for three months and then potentially re refinance the whole the whole capital um so yeah so just to come back minimum loan amount is, is 10k for a specific back funding product but then we have other lenders who we can look at below that amount so even if it is a 5k bill send it across we're 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 very happy to answer that um take a look at that uh, inquiry and, and, and see what we can do um so i hope that was useful um, another one from Charlotte here. Great. Um, so what are the typical fees which lenders charge, presuming they are built into your flat rates? So yes, um, the two case studies that we kind of just put up here, and I'll just flip back um, to uh, to this one here. So there was no arrangement fees uh, associated with putting this facility in place for, for, for this lender. And that is consistent with essentially the majority of lenders offering the, the VAT loan product. Um, so the flat fee is that, that is exactly what that is. Um, so let me just, uh, um, I was going to work out the example. Um, 
so yeah, within that, the the fee the fee associated over that six months was at six point five percent of of the loan amount. So to answer your question, Charlotte, there are no additional fees associated with with the uh, with the VAT loan product, and um, it is all built into that. What we do have as well, um, and one thing I was going to mention is that we 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 have uh, built a VAT calculator. So if you are speaking with your clients, and if there are anybody that that, that is of interest, we can jump on a call and and, and kind of run through it. Um, we can give accurate and kind of live, um, almost indicative quotes for VAT facilities. Um, so that'll be all fees lent in. So let's say we can get a, a 100K, um, there's a 100K VAT, VAT return that, that one of your clients wants to maybe look at funding. Uh, we can give insightful, accurate quotes um, of, of what that would look like. So if if that is of any interest, Charlotte, we can we, we, we can run through that on a, on a separate call in terms of how we can uh, essentially price those VAT loans. Um, but no, hope that was useful. We did have a few questions come in prior to the uh, webinar. So I'll just go through these. If anybody else thinks anything, feel free to drop in the chat. The first one was, how can we market HMRC funding to our clients? So at Swoop, we've got a uh, we've got a great marketing team uh, and a great Swoop for Advisor customer, customer success team, sorry, um, that are consistently working on different marketing materials, um, that the advisors can utilize to, um, I suppose, spread knowledge um, and experience of, of, of the different products that we can look at. Um, so we have a marketing hub um, with lots of different email templates, uh, blog posts, and different material that you can then share with your clients um, in terms of yeah, expressing the different options around around not just HMRC funding. We've we've got we've 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 got lots of material there that we can um, that we can send across and 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 leverage. Um, also, again, just wanted to to know on that the the calculator that I just mentioned. We have um, we have lots of different useful to uh, tools. Sorry to 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 like I say give accurate and 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 insightful information to your clients. So. What I would say, anything to do with that, just just reach out to 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 your relevant contact at Swoop or myself, um, and we can um, and we can obviously share what we have available. And if there's something more specific that you would like, we can work with our marketing team to to create that as well. So always leverage us as as much as you can. Um, but no, that was useful. Who asked that question? Uh, the next one was, what if my client has any adverse against their business um, or HMRC arrears? So. HMRC funding options are generally uh, underwritten similarly to standard business loan um, inquiries. So you are, so if let's say uh, the director of the business is uh, had some adverse adverse credit, maybe the business has a CCJ, or maybe there's a significant HMRC position. Um, I suppose we'll do it all separately. I mean, if there is adverse, there are some lenders that could take a view in it. Others, it it potentially will be a straight up reply. But once we, what I would say with that, if there is anything that's, um, if, if we're transparent with the different things that we can, uh, that, that that we are discussing and we can present a story to a lender, we can generally be able to to gauge feedback on that and, and see what we can do. So it wouldn't be an automatic decline. We just need to know a little bit more about the story. And again, if there are HMRC arrears, all of this HMRC funding products is for forward-looking liabilities. So, if let's say the business has uh, an outstanding back position from two or three returns ago, that isn't something that can be funded with a specific product. There may be other things we can look at. As I mentioned earlier, maybe there's a, a different term loan type facility that we could support with, but it, it has to be forward looking if we're looking at these kind of specific fat and, and court tax products. Great. And then the last one, the last question I've got here is, um, does a client need to provide a personal guarantee? So this is actually, HMRC funding is one of the few products in the market where borrowers and directors aren't generally asked to provide PGs to sit behind the facility under 150K liability. If it gets above that, the majority of lenders will ask for will ask for a PG. Um, so yeah, just to, just to come back around, um, generally funders won't ask for it. So we speak to a lot of businesses who may be apprehensive around personal guarantees, um, one that we're always kind of transparent with from the outset. But if that is the case, let's definitely take a look at some HMRC funding options and we can um, and we can see what 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 potentially uh, we can do to support that. Great. So that was everything, guys. Um, 
if there are no more questions, we can we we can call it there. If there's anything after the call, like I say, please reach out to myself or your contact at Swoop, uh, and we'll and we'll see what we can do to support um, yourself, your clients, um, yeah, and 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 yeah, see see how we can help moving forward. So, yeah, hope everybody has a good day, uh, and yeah, we will speak soon. Bye.